today to start our read aloud is Ohio State Buckeyes Day. We are hopeful that we wash our hands and stay healthy and get the germs out of our area so that our Buckeyes can get back to football and basketball season next year. What do you have to say? Go Buckeyes! Go Bucks! Go OSU! Go Bucks! Here's hoping we can see him back soon. Today, chapter 41, The Tears of a King. Despero found the king in the peas room, sitting on his daughter's bed, clutching the, clutching the tapestry to his chest. He was weeping, although weeping is too small of a word for what the king had undertaken. Tears were cascading from his eyes. What's a cascade? It's like a waterfall. A small puddle had formed at his feet. I'm not exaggerating. The king, it seemed, was intent on crying himself a river. If you cry a river. You, like, all, you have so many tears coming down. Yes, it shows extreme sadness. Reader, have you ever seen a king cry? When the powerful are made weak, when they are revealed to be human in their hearts, their diminishment is nothing short of terrifying. You can be sure that Despero was terrified. Absolutely. But he spoke up anyway. Sir, the mouse said to the king. But the king did not hear him, and Despero watched. King Philip dropped it and took his golden crown from his lap and used it to beat himself on the chest over and over. The king, as I've mentioned, had several faults. He was nearsighted. He was ridiculous, unreasonable laws. And much in the way of Miggery Sow, he was not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But there was one extraordinary, wonderful, admirable thing about the king. He was a man who was willing to love with all of his heart. And just as he loved the queen with the whole of his heart, he too loved his daughter with the whole of it, even more than the whole. He loved the Princess P with every particle of his being, and she had been taken away from him. But what Despero had come to say to the king had to be said, so he tried again. Excuse me, he said. He wasn't certain, really, how a mouse should address a king. Sir didn't seem like a big enough word. Despero thought about it for a moment. He cleared his throat. Excuse me, very most honorable head person. King Philip stopped beating his crown against his chest and looked around the room. Down here, most honored head person, said Despero. The king, tears still falling from his eyes, looked at the floor and he squinted. Is that a bug speaking to me? He said. No, said Despero. I am a mouse. We met before. A mouse? Bellowed the king. A mouse is one step removed from a rat. Sir, said Despero, very most honored head person, please, you have to listen to me. This is important. I know where your daughter is. You do? Said the king. He sniffed. He blew his nose on his cloak. Where? He said, and he bent over to look closely at Despero. One tears, two tears, three enormous king-sized tears fell with an audible plop onto Despero's head and rolled down his back, washing away the flower and revealing his brown fur. Sir, most honored head person, sir, said Despero as he wiped the king's tears out of his own eyes. She's in the dungeon. Liars, said the king. I knew it. All rodents are liars and thieves. She is not in the dungeon. My men have searched the dungeon. But no one really knows the dungeon, except the rats, sir. There are thousands of places where she could be hidden, and only the rats would know. 
Your men would never be able to find her if the rats don't want her to be found. Ha! <sighs> said the king and clapped his hands over his ears. Do not speak to me of rats and what they know, he shouted. Rats are illegal. Rats are against the law. There are no rats in my community. They do not exist. Sir, most honored head person, that is not true. Hundreds of rats live in the dungeon of the castle. One of them has taken your daughter and it will send them. The king started humming. I cannot hear you. He stopped to shout, I cannot hear you. Anyway, what you say is wrong. You're a rodent and a liar. He started to hum again and he stopped. I've had hired fortune tellers, a magician. They are coming from a distant land. They will tell me where my daughter is. They will speak the truth. A mouse cannot speak the truth. I am telling you the truth, said Despero. I promise. But the king would not listen. He sat with his hands over his ears. He hummed loudly. Big fat tears rolled down his face and fell to the floor. Despero sat and stared at him in dismay. What should he do now? He put a nervous paw up to his neck and pulled at the red thread, and suddenly his dream came flooding back to him. The dark and the light and the knight swinging his sword, and the moment when he realized the suit of armor was empty. And then, reader, as Despero stood before the king, a wonderful, amazing thought occurred to the mouse. What if the suit of armor in his dream was empty for a reason? Because it was waiting for him. You know me, that was what the knight said. Yes, said Despero, I do know you. I can't hear you, said the king. I'll have to do it myself, said Despero. I, Despero, will have to be the knight in shining armor. There is no other way. It has to be me. Despero turned. He left the weeping king. He went to find the Threadmaster.